Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about... Hey, Dr. Schuster, do photons have mass? What? Dylan, I'm making a video. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's exactly what I wanted to talk about, Dylan. Congratulations. So, do photons have mass is the question, and the answer is nope. But I'm talking about rest mass right here. And you remember, I mean, maybe somebody told you once, that E is mc squared. When I write down E is mc squared, what I mean is G, E is m, but m is gamma times m naught. And that's m naught times c squared. So what I'm saying is this stuff right here is real mass. It's rest mass times gamma. So a photon has a rest mass of zero, but a gamma of infinity. Remember, gamma is this relationship right here. It's one over the square root of one minus beta squared over, well, beta squared, right? And we got beta defined to be v over c. So if you plug in c right here, you find that beta is equal to one. And I'm going to take one minus one squared, which is zero. I'm I'm going to take the square root of zero, which is zero, and I'm going to divide one by zero, which is, in fact, infinity. So I've got infinity times zero, and you all know that that can kind of be whatever it wants to be. And it turns out that the mass of a photon, therefore, is unknown. The actual effective mass of a photon in terms of calculating its energy. So we've got to go about this a different direction. I know that I could say that gamma times m naught is e over c squared, just solving this equation right here for gamma m naught, e over c squared, right? But I also know that momentum, the momentum in relativity is gamma times m naught times v. And in our case, well, we know the velocity of a photon is going to be c, so I got gamma times m naught times c. And my plan is to go over here and tell you something about momentum. If I plug in, wait a second, what if I plug in momentum as, in fact, energy, and I don't mean electric field, but I mean energy, if I say momentum is energy over c square, that's what gamma times m naught is, and then I multiply that by v, but v is c. Let's switch colors, this is becoming tedious. I'm gonna say that v is c, so I get e times c over c square, which is in fact just e over c. And then we have another way to write the energy of a photon. Now we say that the energy of a photon is its momentum times the speed of light. Whoa, that's pretty cool. And the momentum of a photon is the energy of that photon divided by the speed of light. But remember Einstein's famous conclusion about photons. Einstein will tell you that the energy of a photon is, well, Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon. So we could set these two equal to each other. We can say that Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon is P times C, and then I might be interested in finding the momentum of a photon in a new way. Then it's just Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon divided by the speed of light. But wait, frequency over the speed of light, that reminds me of something. I remember that the speed of a wave is its frequency times its wavelength. And so if I say C is F times lambda, and I solve this for F divided by C, I'm gonna find F divided by C is one over lambda. So I can take this and go up here and say that the momentum of a photon is H bar divided by that photon's wavelength. Ooh, H bar, did I say H bar? This is just an H. Look, it says H. Sorry, I was getting into the mode right there. This is Planck's constant. Please disregard what I previously said. We'll talk about it later. If photons have momentum, then you can get them to move things. And when you turn on an electric torch, you will find yourself pushed back in exactly the same way. Let's say you've got a purple LED in there or something. You're getting light going that direction, which has momentum, so there's a recoil effect this direction on the light. If you have an incredibly bright light, then you will be pushed backwards. In fact, you can propel yourself like a rocket. Ooh, or you could use something called a solar sail. You could propel yourselves with the light from the sun and you just have this enormous thin sail and uh, ooh, what do you think? Would you get a greater momentum transfer if you were building a solar sail out of a black solar sail? 
or out of a white solar sail. Greater momentum transfer from a black one or a white one. You make the call.